Welcome back, traders and investors, to Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep, brought to you by MarketFi. I'm your co-host, Joel Alconan, along with Brianna Valeski, and I have Mike Bellafiore on the line. He is the co-founder of SMB Capital. Mike, how are you doing on this Friday? Great. As, as we were joking uh, off air, thanks for having me follow the Michael Jordan of markets. Exactly. Been around a long time. But before we get into some individual individual issues, I have a broad question for you. And uh, you're a veteran, you know, with prop shops, with prop trading, running a very successful firm. And now, you know, the dynamics of the markets have changed quite a bit to, to the algorithmic, the automated trading strategies. Um, is there still, you know, is there still room? Is there still still be success for like the old screen trader reading the prints or are the bots just just taking over the markets so you definitely have to be better at your game than when i first started to trade there the way that i look at markets now is you have to be very very clear that strategies you're trading have edge and if you don't then the bots are going to beat you up so you know yesterday was a really good example of how we look at markets there was opportunity with what we say are unusual options activity plays. You saw that in Yelp. There was some unusual options activity in Yelp, lots of aggressive 50 call buying. There was a breaking news play potentially in that OWW quick hit. There was a rumor that went out that maybe the deal with Expedia wasn't going to go through. Certainly the trade of the week, which the bots have nothing to do with, and it's a great trade. We call it a changing fundamentals trade, was in cores. Trading that on the short side, whether you're a swing trader, whether you're a scalper, it all worked if you sort of understood how, how bad that report was. So the, the, difference, the difference is our preparation, and it's great to talk to you as we're preparing for, for markets. The preparation is much higher. You have to be very, very specific that the trades that you're making, the plays that you're making, clearly have edge. And if they don't, you're, you're going to get beat. And I wrote about this in the playbook that you need to sit down and write variables for the types of setups that you really love. You've got to give them names. You've got to understand exactly what those variables are. Heck, in this market, in this day and age, you should even be backtesting them. And... You've got to be keeping statistics on whether or not that setup is still working monthly, weekly, daily. And you've got to stick to that. The best traders that I see, and, and believe there are a lot of really good traders out there. There are a lot of guys that are still able to make seven figures playing this game. So that myth that all prop traders are, are going away, maybe some of them are, but a lot of them are coming, coming up the curve, and a lot of them are still doing really, really well. But they're playing their game on their turf with edge. Uh, something we talk about all the time, and uh, you know, Dennis and I both, uh, you know, learned a lot from uh, Bob Bright, uh, Bright Trading. You know, trade where the edge is, and over the years in the market, you have to constantly, you know, move around, try different strategies. Something Dennis has been great at different strategies for different times and different markets just going into one specific here you talked about the yelp here and there was you know they were looking for some strategic alternatives that got a nice bump up of the stock so you saw that could you tell us what the option activity you saw was and you obviously it was there big call buying and so you go with the buyer or do you sometimes try and use that as a fade as well yeah so this is a strategy and this is a strategy that you got to learn first, and then you got to try and master. So what we were what we were seeing, we have software which helps us identify unusual options activity. So a couple of our guys on the desk specialize in scanning markets for unusual options activity. They pay a vendor who helps them synthesize the data, and when those guys on our desk are seeing unusual options activity, they call it out. So yesterday, the trader who sits in front of me to the diagonal section was, was watching through his scanning technology all of the unusual activity going on in options and yelled out 
there's unusual buying in Yelp at 50. The 50 calls are going out. And so I typed up the stock, and you have an option as a prop trader, at least on our desk. You can think about making a short-term options play, or you can think about just owning the stock, buying the stock outright. And so I actually bought the stock. There was uh, two 50-cent pops in it. You can also decide, hey, this is kind of unusual. Maybe I'm going to make a swing trade with this. And maybe I will buy some 48 calls. Maybe I will buy some of the 50 calls and join this guy. Maybe I'll just swing trade it and, you know, buy Yelp around 47, 50 ish year and, and sort of see what happens. So, you know, this is a strategy. There's different ways to express that idea. But the thing that I want to impress and the thing that, that you're rightly dragging out of me is, that is a specific strategy, and there are people on our desk that are, are spending lots of money getting really great information through awesome tools and are great at that strategy. And one of the advantages of the, of the prop desk is you, you get all this back and forth, and you get these different ways to express ideas. Um, so you know, I made a, a quick couple of bucks from somebody else's idea um, and it was it was a good trade. Uh, also, you can look at it too from the market dynamics. If someone comes in and buys a boatload of the fifty calls, the people that are taking the other end of that trade are just not going naked short, right? The, 50, the, the those calls, they're either going to do another offsetting position or they're going to come in and buy the stock, right? I mean, as yeah. A, yeah, I mean they're just yeah. not going to go naked into something. The, the option, I mean, you know, I think about the option, you know, market makers on the floor or whatever, but the bots are doing it now. They're going to, you know, they're going to they're going to buy the stock and have the hedge on and you know just let that time decay go in their favor and wiggle their way out of the stock. So great strategy. You just gave us like three or four strategies off that that one thing. And that's something that we really note on Benzinga Pro is unusual options activity. So we'll definitely have our traders put that as a net one tool in their trading toolbox. But let's get to the morning movers now in Deckers. And I asked Ralph Alcampora this question. I'm going to ask you too. 15% fluctuation in the price of a stock off one earnings report. And uh, I can't even remember. I mean, obviously, some people thought it was good. Some people thought it was bad. But, I mean, come on. A 15% fluctuation off one earnings report? Does that, does that send any kind of signal to you about these, you know, the markets and the speculative fervor in them? So I love that. So, <laughs> um, look, you know, there's one thing you have to get over if you're going to be a professional trader. And it's that markets, they're not fair. So it, you get over that. Okay, now you're accepting to play in a game that's not fair. And the good side of that is there's a lot of upside if, if you're good at it. But spending a lot of time thinking that the markets ought to be fair and, and, and you're going to obsess about that, um, that's not your job. That's like Chuck Schumer's job in the, in the U.S. Senate. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's a, I can't justify that move. You're totally right. I would say this, um, you want to understand why that is. You want to understand market structure. So there are algorithmic trading programs that scrape headlines. And when certain headlines hit, those automated strategies immediately react. And they're betting that if they immediately react a thousand times, that they're going to make money. And I'm sure they've back tested this and feel they have edge. And so look, in this case, maybe they got maybe some of the automated trading systems got it wrong right away. But again, they're not they're not worried about this one trade, they're worried about a thousand trades. And so that's that's what you're seeing. You're seeing automated strategies scraping headlines. And reacting and sometimes overreacting and sometimes acting too quickly because, hey, if that report, you know, there are going to be times where there's a headline and it hits miss on full year's guidance and the automated strategy scrapes headlines immediately gets short a lot 
and the thing is down 20% and it stays down there and they've made a bundle. And so you've got one side, the automated strategies and they're different ones. So there's different scraping going on and they're competing against each other. And then you've got the big discretionary traders who are sitting back and saying, wait a second, I think that automated strategy overreacted. I'm reading the report now. Okay. This is, this is not as bad or this is not as good as the bots are making this out to be, and I'll fade that position. And there are big traders to size who will come in. I would say one more thing about this report. It's confusing. I'm looking at this stock today. I'm confused. <laughs> and specifically, I'm confused for this reason. Generally, when a company issues upside guidance for the full year, like Decker's has done, I get very, very interested and I want to dive deeper and I want to think about trading that on the long side. Generally, when I read a headline that says gross margin for Q4 is down almost 4%, I get very interested in that stock and I start to think about trading it on, that on the short side. Well, we got both of those in Deckers. We've got a pattern, a news catalyst pattern that I generally look to trade long upside guidance for the full year 2016 and a news catalyst that generally drags stocks lower. When your margins are decreasing, the street usually hates that because what you're selling, you're making less money on. You're not as scalable. The, the market generally doesn't like that. And then to complicate this even further, well, for the full year, gross margins are actually expected to be about in line with what the street expected. So there are going to be some traders that are sitting there saying, I don't really know if I can trust Deckers because they really messed up on margins for this quarter. And there are going to be other people that are sitting there saying, you know what, the guidance is good for the full year. And it looks like this was a one-time thing for Q4 with guidance being down because for the full year, their guidance is actually in line. So I, I can see, you can see where there's confusion. You know, for this, for this name, and, you know, we technically we have 70 as a support area. And before I sort of headed in here to get ready for this, it was indicating pre-market around there for the open. So I'm going to sort of let that, I'm going to let that settle a little bit. I probably won't look at this name until after 1015 and it starts to trend for me because there's, there's really counterbalancing news catalysts here, which I'm not sure, I'm not sure what the big money players are, are going to do with that news yet. And uh, looking at this one, too, it you know, I mentioned that it had the big 10-point range, and now it's holding at the $70 area. For me, I like to keep an eye on the closes, and you had a double-close area here ahead of earnings, 71.20, 71.57. So I don't think I could get real interested in this one until at least went green on the day above those uh, double-close area. And coming on the downside, you know, 70.42 looks like a level, just going on the daily highs and lows. But letting it shake out for a little bit is definitely a way to play it as well. A couple of other movers, Alta here, uh, consolidation station for a long time, uh, busted out on the numbers here. Uh, you're looking to go with the trend in this one? I've seen we pulled back from that, uh, from that high, or you're more looking to fade this one today? No, I'm going to trade this on the long side. So I really like this report. Um, and when I say I'm going to trade on the long side, so I have patterns. I'm not just going to get in there and hit buy. The way that I trade is I really like the report. That's something that gets me very interested. And what gets me specifically interested? Well, I love the fact that they beat. I love the fact that their same store sales are higher than expected. I love for the fact that this is a company that's growing. So I want to think about my patterns to trade this on the long side. I'm okay with it pulling in. That's great. That's better for us. Um, so there are going to be three or four different types of patterns that I get interested in. Probably the easiest trade for me will be if we can get this thing uh, to, to, to get above its gap. I call it the money trade. So you get something that gaps up and 45 minutes passes on the trading day. The first 45 minutes of trading, we call price discovery. So people are shuffling around and all confused and stocks don't trend in the first 45 minutes. And then after the 10, 15 
period, now things have settled, things can start to trend, we think. And so I'd like to see a gap and a hold above the gap. Find a nice area to buy into support. Probably switch over to my longer term charts, maybe my 15, my 30 minute charts, see some holding above the gap and see if we can play this on the long side. Okay, uh, GameStop too. Uh, what's your analysis? I you kind of went into it there. You like you know that they beat on the top line, the bottom line, same store sales. I mean, you have to look at it you know different for different stocks. But uh, what's your you know another retailer here? What's your what's your approach at GameStop? Yeah, so I'll be watching this name. I like the fact I like the fact that their same store sales are coming in a little bit better than expected. They're coming in flat to three percent versus a 1% decline that was expected by the market. So that gets me very interested. That's going to be something that's on my watch list. We tweeted out the stocks that we're going to be talking about during this show and the stocks that I'm going to be watching for the day uh, before we came on here. That's, that's one of the top five names of the day. To me, I think you're going to have to deal with this 4480 level. So, you know, if you're thinking about trading this from the long side, you want to ask yourself, what's the risk reward for a short term trader now that the stock is really only about a point away from an important resistance level? Do I really want to make that trade? Maybe I do. Maybe I do. But um, again, I'm going to be looking to trade this on the long side. That's just the way that I look at markets. This news is very positive. It looks like the notes that we're getting from research are that people are saying good things about the company. And, you know, Oppenheimer put out a note today saying 45 bucks is, is its price target, sees momentum building in the name. My sense is you'll probably see a little bit more of that from street research. Um, so I'm not, I'm not looking to fade this name. Probably some, some other people might be. But uh, when same store sales are much better than expected, when you start to get some research behind it um, and the stock's gapping up, I'm going to be looking for a hold of that gap and finding some places to try and get along that name. Do you trade any futures? Our firm does. So we have some, some pretty good futures traders. And we're looking to hire more because the couple of guys we actually have at the firm are doing very, very well. We have... Uh, we have some high performing traders in that space. And I think, you know, as you mentioned at the beginning of this broadcast, one of the things that shops like ours are doing is we're doing a lot more. So when I first started trading, I was just an intraday equities trader. At our firm today, we're trading options as we talked about. We're not only trading unusual options activity, but we're trading, we're spread trading options. We have a desk that does that. That desk is doing very, very nicely. We're trading futures. Uh, we're trading. You mentioned uh, Don Bright's firm. We do a, we do a little bit of, uh, I don't want to say parish trading, but we'll do similar types of strategies to that where uh, we'll do some R plays um, in a similar vein of what uh, Bright Trading has been known for. Um, and so we do automated trading. So we have models that are running. They're not high frequency trading models. They're, they're more gray boxes. They're slower. We're not trying to compete in that uh, very, very fast space. So, uh, and, we're, you know, we're, and we are still doing a lot of changing fundamentals plays, which we talked about today. Uh, we are still doing a lot of uh, intraday trading as well. But we're adding. We're, we're much more comprehensive in our approach. We're much more sophisticated in our approach. We're looking for edge in lots of different ways uh, than we had when I first started trading. Mike Bellafiore, co-founder of SMB Capital, a proprietary trading firm in New York City, giving us great lessons. I hope everyone in the chat room like had their pencil and paper out and we're listening to some of those things because they're just basic tenets of the market and trading and and what it needs to, to battle these markets. Mike, as always, a pleasure having you on. And I'm going to make sure that Brianna gets you back on again soon. Thanks, Joe. Have a great weekend. Okay, thank you.